So Jesse, you've been working with the Collective Laboratories team for the past two years. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you've been working with us, um, how you s helped us formulate the serum and the shampoo and conditioner? Sure. Well, you know, we've known each other for now 18 years and been friends for a while. So when you told me you were working on um, this new startup, I was, of course, interested. And it was in, <coughs> in an industry that I've spent, you know, 15, 20 years in myself. Um, so I certainly wanted to help and saw it as an opportunity in an industry where, you know, we use, there's a lot of agreements, ingredients with a lot of different claims. Um, and a lot of folks use some things that don't actually work. I thought it was a really good opportunity um, to try to use kind of the most efficacious products in the right balance to try to you know get a product to market that really does really does do what what we say it does. Yeah. So speaking of ingredients, can you tell me and just talk a little bit about some of our key ingredients? So let's start with the lilac. Yeah, so we have a product that is is lilac based. It's it's the undifferentiated cells from the lilac plant. Um, the company we work with actually uh, grows and stresses these cells to produce the um, the part of the plant that does the most bioactivity when it comes to whatever claim um, we're, we're working on. Um, uh, for lilac, it's it's imparting shine. Um, and the, the strength uh, of the hair. Um, so they stress the cell uh, to, to produce that aspect of the plant in the highest concentration and they use actually the cell membrane and the cell wall as the delivery system um, to, to bring the product in. So it's, it's really a true grown to order uh, product. Um, it helps with biodiversity. You know, for some of these rare plants, <clears throat> lilac not being one, but we have other products in the line that, you know, for a rare plant, if you farm it, you could, you know, make it become extinct or something like that. This helps us um, to kind of make the best natural product without kind of disturbing the biodiversity of, of the crop itself. I love the lilac. It's in all of our products so far in the line and we're hoping to formulate other products with lilac It's a very well. strong ingredient. We probably have some other, um, you know, kind of different plants from that product line to, to use in, in other SKUs. Awesome. Talk to me a little bit about the oat in the products. Yeah, so we have got oat beta-glucan in the uh, serum. Uh, and this product, if you remember when you had poison ivy when you were a kid mm -hmm. and your mom or dad put you in a bath of Quaker oats, <laughs> um, you know, that's, you know, this is kind of the concentrated aspect of the, um, you know, oat molecule that uh, helps with, you know, kind of calming the skin and, and soothing the skin. Um, and it is exactly what it's, what it's called. It's oat beta-glucan. Um, and that's what we're what we're bringing in in the in the serum. And what I love about the oats is that it actually, you know, a lot of our customers when we talk to, you know, thousands of our customers, it's they have itchy scalp. So oat, I feel like, is a really great ingredient to help with that. Yeah, it helps soothe, like you said. Um, so I'm looking forward to using oats. Um, yeah, there's a couple calming yeah. ingredients in the serum, and and that happens to be uh, the one that's kind of providing that uh, that benefit. Awesome. So let's talk about the soap bark that's in our products. Yeah, so um, soap bark comes from a tree called Kilaya. Mm -hmm. uh, it's down in Chile, and um, it's kind of one of the you know, few natural surfactants uh, out there in the world and goes through a kind of a, uh, a process that they actually take the, you know, the bark off the tree and just you know, through no chemical processing, kind of refine it um, to come out with this, um, it's a Kilaya extract uh, is what we use, you know, commonly referred to as soap bark extract. Um, and, you know, that, uh, that brings some solvency in the formula um, and is, you know, a super mild um, uh, surfactant that, that we have in the, uh, in the serum. So in non-chemistry speak, can you tell me what a surfactant is? Well, surfactant <laughs> is a surface active agent. Um, in the serum, it's you'll find those more uh, in the shampoo uh, as well. But in the serum, it, it's more of a of a solvent and delivering some um, 
active properties, um, you know, from a from a mildness uh, standpoint. Great. All right, let's talk about tamarind extract. Okay, um, that comes to us from a supplier. Um, it's a you know something that's been used in India for a long time um, with respect to keeping hair healthy um, and with the proper shine. Uh, and this company kind of uh, concentrates uh, aspects of of plants into the oils that are best to carry them uh, through the process and make sure they're bioavailable when they get to the the skin or or the hair follicle or the hair itself, the hair shaft itself. Um, so you know that's what we used with this uh, tamarind extract that's kind of forced into a, a coconut oil, uh, and that that helps us to deliver that right to the to the hair itself. Great, it makes it shiny, stronger, all of the good stuff. Exactly. Awesome. So there's one actually ingredient that's in our serum. It's biotin. Um, you know, just within the beauty industry, I know that you've heard a little bit of controversy about biotin in terms of ingesting it as a pill. Um, there's many people that I've spoken to, I'm sure you've spoken to, that say it sort of irritates their stomach if they take it in a pill form. Some of our customers were really concerned about biotin being an, a key ingredient in our serum. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the difference between ingesting the pill and then leaving it on? In the serum? Yeah, I mean, biotin's kind of a, a key form of vitamin B. You know, it's for healthy cells, you know, healthy hair. Um, you want the cell to have, you know, the, the best nutrients it needs to, to create, uh, you know, a healthy hair shaft and follicle. And, you know, that obviously makes it stronger, you know, kind of through the process of its life. Um, and, you know, ingesting biotin versus putting it on your hair or scalp two very different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you actually have, you know, an allergic sensitivity, it, you know, you probably have it on your scalp and your stomach, but I, I would say it's probably mostly, you know, anything gut related, you know, unless you actually have the acute, uh, you know, allergen sensitivity, you know, I don't, I don't think that that, that means it'll do anything negative, um, you know, yeah. when it's put on your scalp or, or in your hair. Right. Okay. So now let's talk about preservatives. I know your favorite topic and my One favorite One of my topic. favorite topics, yeah. <laughs> um, why within the beauty industry is, you know, the top, well, within the beauty industry, again, you know this as much as I, you know, I do, is, is that preservatives are a very hot topic. Um, and you obviously need to use preservatives within products. So talk to me a little bit about preservatives in general mm -hmm. and then the concept of natural preservatives. Yeah, so preservatives, very hot topic, talked about a lot, maybe not talked about with the best information all the time. Um, so there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, from a responsibility standpoint, you know, it depends on the water activity in your formula and the type of product that you're working on, um, you know, determines the level of preservative you need. And any, any product that has, you know, uh, a certain water activity, which which most of the products uh, on the shelf today do, you absolutely need to uh, put a preservative in the formula. Now, some people call things preservatives that aren't preservatives. You know, uh, the actual term in Europe means something different or means something in Europe, doesn't mean anything in the US kind of trade and commerce. Um, but in the truest sense of the word, you need a preservative to keep the product safe. Um, so if you don't have a preservative in a product with uh, the water activity that many consumer products have, um, the serum, the shampoo, the conditioner, um, you know, you could grow some harmful bugs. Yeah. You know, nobody wants to talk about it, but that's what preservatives are so there for, gross. to keep things shelf stable. And, you know, if you want to create a product that's safe for people, um, you know, there can be some acute toxicity um, with bugs. And if you look at the FDA um, website, most of the letters that they've sent to companies are based on improperly preserved products. Um, so you have to balance, you know, what sounds good from a consumer standpoint with what really has um, efficacy. And, you know, different preservatives work differently in different mm -hmm. systems. So people don't think about this, but there's a lot there's a lot that goes into a formula. It depends on, you know, the pH of the formula. It depends on um, the water activity of the formula. It depends on the use. You know, if it's in a lip balm, it's going to see, 
you know, repetitive use on your lips, it's different than if it's on a hair serum that, you know, you're going to touch once and put, put on your hair. So we've tried to balance that with the most efficacious preservatives um, that, are, that are really true preservatives and providing that, you know, kind of um, sleep at night, um, you know, kind of safety for, for us. Yeah. Um, that you know you're putting a product in the marketplace that's that's not dangerous um, sure. in any way. What preservatives are you using for the collective laboratories? So f uh, different in in the serum versus the shampoo versus the conditioner, um, you know, because of the use. Mm -hmm. um, we're using phenoxyethanol. Um, we're using ethyl hexoglycerin. Ethyl hexoglycerin is a booster that allows you to use less phenoxyethanol. Um, you know, so we're trying to um, to balance that. You know, the the you know the dose matters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we got got to put the product in at the right level. Um, you know, to be efficacious from a preservative standpoint, but to not affect anything in a negative in a negative way, either um, on skin feel or on sensitivity, um, or even you know breaking the viscosity of of, of the product. Okay. Why did you include niacinamide? in our activating serum? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a form of vitamin B. It's vitamin B3. Uh, we've got a couple uh, different variants of the B vitamin in, in the serum. And it's, you know, kind of overall uh, cell health. Um, it, it, uh, you you want to keep the, the cell hydrated um, and, and increase the lipid barrier so that you don't lose water um, in, in the cell and that keeps the cell healthy. Um, and there's a various host of other benefits from having kind of the, the vitamin B cocktail that we've, um, that we've chosen for, for the serum. Great. So one of the reports from our customers that they love is around the, the volume and the, the moisturizing effect of our serum. What ingredient gives us that specific effect? Um, for that effect, we're using panthenol. Uh, panthenol is another form of the B vitamin. It's vitamin B5. And uh, here what it does is it actually um, penetrates the hair shaft itself, making sure, uh, you know, to keep the hair, sh hair itself moisturized mm -hmm. and, you know, a healthier, thicker, uh, more moisturized uh, hair shaft is, you know, adds to volume mm -hmm. um, when you look at it from an end result from a, a consumer perceivable benefit standpoint. Yeah, and again, our customers are loving it because, you know, when they apply it, you pretty much see the added benefit of the panthenol within the ingredient right away, within the serum right away. Um, so it's, I think it's a tremendous um, ingredient within our. Yeah, I mean, we have a pretty heavy uh, ingredient list in the serum. We load it up with a bunch of things that we, you know, put, you know, various targets on various aspects uh, of the hair, of the scalp. Uh, to try to kind of hit hit all points. Mm -hmm. It's you know really a, a powerful serum with a lot of um, mm -hmm. you know active ingredients that have clinicals that kind of hit on each of the areas that we that we targeted. Great. One of the ingredients we talked about when we were formulating the shampoo was manoi oil. Can you tell me a little bit about you know some of the benefits? Why we decided to go with manoi oil in the shampoo? Yeah, it's a balancing act. You want to bring ingredients into uh, those types of formulas, some for water-soluble parts of your body and other for oil-soluble parts. Um, you know, we wanted to add the Manoi oil because it's been used for centuries. It's from the South Pacific. It's actually um, Tahitian flowers that are soaked in oil and has been used um, on people's hair to impart shine for centuries. And there was actually some science to that. Um, so, you know, we're using uh, the right level of concentration to actually impart that uh, healthy hair shine uh, from you know from the shampoo. Yep, and you can definitely tell when you use it that plus the lilac stem cells, you have this glorious, luxurious head of hair that shines. Like to hear it. <laughs> can you use minoxidil with our serum? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've we've formulated a safe product, um, a minoxidil based product also um, uh, you would assume is, is a safe for your scalp product. Mm -hmm. The FDA is very strict with respect to um, what you can claim uh, on a product with, with respect to, to hair regrowth um, and that, that strictness 
you know, minoxidil is one of the only ingredients um, and formulas that um, you can actually use that claim with. And there's really no, I see no, um, you know, based on the formulas of both, um, no interactions that we should, you know, we should worry about. You can never guarantee anything, but, um, you know, they're, they're both um, safe to use on, on the scalp from, you know, from the data that we have and, and from that product being in the marketplace for, for quite a long time. Great. How do you feel in general about what's in our bottles? So I'm talking our serum, shampoo, and conditioner. How do you feel about the overall finished products? Yeah, um, I'm excited. I'm proud. I'm, it's been fun because um, we're actually using products that um, have efficacy um, in the marketplace and, and trying to use only those products that, that provide some real tangible benefit. Um, so it's been you know, kind of a refreshing opportunity to um, you know, to make sure everything in the in the formula is is adding to the to the end overall result, and you know that's what we want to want to continue to do. And it's always a uh, a balance. You know, there's there's plenty of ways to to skin a cat when it comes to you know different formulations for different different aspects of of different applications, uh, rinses, masks, you know, shampoos, conditioners, serums. Um, you know, so there's many ways to get to the end point, but you know, I think we're doing it, um, what I would say, the right way. Um, you know, using products for their function, um, and and trying to make the best product that feels good, smells good, um, and actually performs well. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's been fun fun to work with you guys. It's been fun to work with you, and I can't wait to have more products coming out soon too. Sounds good. Jesse, it takes months and sometimes even years to formulate a product. So after formulation, like for example, we spent you know 18 months formulating our serum together. But after we landed on the formulation itself, um, we had to test. We had to make sure it was safe and stable. Can you talk to me a little bit about the stability testing process to ensure the safety of the serum, the shampoo, the conditioner? Yeah, I mean, there's. There's plenty of science in each ingredient, but there's still a lot of trial and error uh, that comes with making a formulation. You know, a lot of formulation chemists, you know, it's it's an art and a science, um, finding out what what goes together and what interacts well. So that's that's a lot of that time is is putting multiple iterations of formulas together and making sure they have the right skin feel. Um, then you introduce uh, a fragrance or an essential oil. Um, and, and that usually kind of wreaks havoc on everything <laughs> you did to that point. Um, so it's it's a lot of an iterative process. Um, and then you know things that people don't think about. You need to test uh, the interaction with the packaging. Yeah. Um, you know if, if it comes out of a tube or um, anything like that. And 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 its actual stability with the packaging. Um, but once you kind of land on a formula that you like, then you put it up on stability and you stress it. Um, you know, we, we do freeze-thaw testing. You keep it at 45 degrees C uh, for different time periods and measure and make sure you know the formulation doesn't break apart um, and the you know the ingredients don't don't turn into other ingredients and and you know cause negative aspects um, from an aesthetic standpoint uh, in the formula. So it does it does take some time, but yeah, anybody that tells you that they can put it together and you know it's going to be perfect. I don't. I don't <laughs> believe them. It's a. It's an iterative process, and it's. It's an art and a science. We um, are living proof of that as well. I wanted to get the serum done in what, like, a month, basically. Well, everybody has unrealistic <laughs> and, timeline uh, expectations on how long it takes. And then two years later, we have a serum, but it's a beautiful serum, the shampoo and conditioner. But I now appreciate the stability testing, um, ensuring that there is safety involved with it. Things that, you know, you taught me around. The interaction, like you said, of the the product with the packaging was a really important um, learning piece for me as well. Grow fuller, healthier hair with ingredients from Eastern medicine and modern science. Nature, activated by science.